afternoon. Uh -huh. Thank you for being here. And we would like to start this panel talking about scaling up carbon practices in Brazilian agribusiness. This is the uh, event uh, we organized uh, the coalition CDP, and I would like to uh, thank you all. I'm sure we will have uh, nice presentations and a very important discussion. So then, therefore, I would like to call Juliana from the Climate Coalition, and she will. Uh, give us some opening remarks. Well, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. I'm very happy to be here. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to open this panel uh, in the name of the uh, coalition. So we in Brazil have a huge agro-environmental uh, potential. We are the fifth uh, in terms of emissions of greenhouse gases. Two-thirds are uh, from land use and uh, deforestation and agroforest. Uh, I, we work with uh, many agents uh, of uh, the society and university, and we really believe it's possible to produce and uh, to uh, protect and Brazil knows this. We saw uh, that we can uh, increase uh, agriculture production and protect the environment. So we want to give concrete proposals. We need uh, to take care also of food safety worldwide. So uh, the fight against deforestation is the most important thing uh, and therefore a coalition in September 2020 launched a document uh, with six actions and I would like to invite you to know this document. At this COP, the coalition published a document with recommendations on five different axes to value uh, ecosystems for climate finance. This is a very, very important document that brings the vision of coalition and all the members and uh, what we can expect. I would like uh, to celebrate the agreement between uh, different uh, commodity companies uh, in terms of net zero. So this is the moment where companies, civil society gets together and then we can have real transformation. Well, and that's what we are hoping for this COP and the next uh, years. So I wish you all a good panel. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here in name of the coalition. Thank you very much, uh, Juliana. So now I would like uh, to give the floor to Gustavo to give us a welcome to this event. Thank you, thank you, Eva, Isabel and Juliana. Ari, can you hear me? So we have technical problems with the mess. So uh, good morning, afternoon, uh, welcome to everyone who is uh, listening to us. And I would like to uh, thank all the organizers. It was very nice to uh, organize this uh, discussion. And uh, thank you to all the panelists uh, to agree to participate here. This is an event that is supported uh, in our uh, CDP project to work with uh, nature-related problems in the next years. We are working with Minas Gerais and Pará states in their climate action plans. So without further ado, I would like to uh, wish you 
all us all a nice event and now and i will leave uh, the discussion with you yes very good uh, our we have all ready here our panelists our colleagues and partner we have uh, mauro john may the secretary of environment we have Hamuni Khajan from the University of Minas Gerais, and we have online Tassian Custod, who is the uh, uh, CEO for sustainability from Minerva Foods. So uh, that's the team that is talking here today. So please, uh, Secretary of Environment, uh, Mauro Meida, do you want to uh, talk, tell us a little bit about uh, the green certificate project, uh, what are the uh, results and what are the perspectives for the future? Please. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the moderation. So we are in a trap here. Uh, I, for, you forgot. Uh, my oh, I'm Mauro de O Almeida. So, uh, when we joined the government, we saw some challenges. Uh, one of them was uh, the analysis of uh, CAR of the uh, rural register. So, we have a uh, state with one, more than 1 million uh, square uh, kilometers, second biggest state. We have a lot of uh, economic and social challenges to face. And in this specific point, uh, what uh, Juliana was talking about, so the fight against deforestation, it's important to have information, to have data about um, the environmental liabilities we need to recover. So you need to have uh, technological uh, information. So this uh, register, CAR, is a very important document to understand uh, the challenge and the solution you present. So Therefore, we talked to people, so we tried to improve the uh, analyze uh, of this uh, register of the CAR. Today, we have uh, 3,700 something uh, CAR analyzed. We want 50,000 uh, CAR analyzed. And the end of this year. So this is uh, really a, a huge engagement of our secretary. And uh, we build bridges to different institutions, to INPE. And uh, in this process, we got to know Professor Raoni Rajon, and he is uh, researching about big data and in uh, artificial intelligence and uh, University of Minas Gerais. And uh, he was uh, working uh, with traceability of uh, the livestock. And uh, the only missing link was the transportation between cattle. Then uh, we uh, validated uh, this proposal and so then we signed a cooperation agreement and uh, the the intelligence center and the lab of the University of Minas Gerais delivered us the green certificate. The green certificate is a platform where many systems, uh, information systems are connected. And there we could um, find some information. 
of our database is has no problems with deforestation after 2008. 78% have no problem with uh, the legal protected areas. So this is to demystify that was people is saying that uh, we have uh, the collective uh, problems in para state. But we need to accelerate the analysis of our registries at CIR, and then we can clean this database of 80%. So here we have uh, properties that are uh, highly adequated and the uh, 20%, so only 2% are more than 50, are responsible for more than 50% of the uh, deforestation in Pará State. So uh, this, together with other initiatives we have, for example, uh, in the perspective of bioeconomy and the fight against uh, deforestation, we want to announce today at COP that we have a strategy of bioeconomy in place and we are going to implement the state policy. At COP25, we uh, announced the concept of Amazon Now and we said, we told you that next COP we would show you uh, the Amazon uh, Now uh, in place, and now we not only have Amazon now in place, the program, uh, but we already have some results. We have the bioeconomy strategy. We accelerated uh, our uh, registries at CAR, uh, also a credit line, specific credit line uh, for people who work with bioeconomy. And um, we delivered uh, the Amazon fund. So we have here a, a financial platform where we can receive donations and uh, finances. So here we have a link between public initiative and private initiative. So a lot of things are happening and we are presenting them at COP26 and uh, we are prepared to accelerate this even more. So we have the doors open and we are leaving the doors open for these initiatives to uh, receive your support from uh, private funds, from private initiative, from the collective of companies that uh, work with livestock and para. So here we can accelerate uh, the registry and we can accelerate also the green certificate. But we still need support. We still need uh, human resources, technology projects and uh, monitoring of projects. And that's all these initiatives that's uh, what we want to show you here in COP, and we want to connect with partners. So this uh, connection with the intelligence center, with the university, so I think this is already a successful partnership, a leading case. So here we have a public uh, uh, free of charge platform in the state of Pará. So this needs to consolidate and this needs to be important. This is important to accelerate our uh, the registration at CAR and then we can get, um, we can have the plans of degraded, the maps of degraded areas and then we can solve the problem. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for this room. And um, 
I am, uh, and so a cop is we really uh, run from one event uh, to the other. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your invitation. And I'm happy to be here at this panel. So we have five minutes. So do you want to, to speak anything? So still adding to what the secretary said, we saw in uh, the last year here in Brazil, a very clear cut example of what happens when the public policy does not listen to science, because despite of all its uh, limitations, science that is institutionalized in the universities and the research centers, it's the most effective way of interfering in the reality, the most independent way too, because even answering once that I was questioned by somebody of the private sector, why this and that? Well, my salary doesn't change if I show that 80% of the growers uh, do not deforest and that uh, 20 do. Our objective, uh, while science, is to bring the best uh, number. Because with the uh, correct information, you can promote the correct action. And in this space in particular, which is the productive chain space, where we see uh, Global demand here, and even uh, on Monday, you are invited in the afternoon, we will have the event with the presence of the secretary on this topic about the transparency and due diligence. We are talking about Euro Union, European Union, France, China, United Kingdom, and with all, with the clear cut uh, projects, investments, and we only have this happening if we have a sustainability if it is not linked to defer deforestation but it's like this uh, caesar's wife should not only be honest it has to show that she is honest so transparent solutions black box solutions uh, uh, where the financial flow is from those who sell the product won't be able to solve then we have technology here in brazil and in Brazil, we have this uh, leadership with a close collaboration in terms of intelligence and development with the government of Pará. The data is uh, there. So we need political will. And this is what we saw in the Pará's administration. We saw this will to understand what science is bringing and with this create public policies. And like this, we can have a greater, we can cause a greater impact. And we want to increase this and also take this information to other publics, to the federal government, to other states, and then we can assemble this uh, process, which is very transforming, very transformative, actually. Actually, it's a workout, right? You put your mask, you remove the mask, make the mic. Well, okay, Secretary, thank you very much. Super thanks, Raoni. I believe that this is the great message and a lot of cooperation so that we can uh, win uh, this challenge of uh, time and scale, many cooperations uh, with different stakeholders and organizations. This is the path. And talking about cooperation, let's uh, uh, hear now Tassiano Custodio from Minerva Food that will tell us a little bit about the Renovi project and the partnership with Ima Flora, that uh, they are calculating a first pilot to uh, the carbon footprint and the performance in carbon of uh, livestock uh, farmers. Uh, so good afternoon to all in Glasgow. Good morning for those in Brazil. It's a proud for us. Uh, we are very proud to be here. I would like to thank the staff of the organization of all the event. I thank especially the Florma team, Marina, Isabel, with the Minerva team, with uh, other projects in Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, our manager, Tamara Lopez, and also congratulate the people in Glasgow, Secretary Mauro, Professor Reoni, Gustavo, Juliana here on the screen with me. I'm going to share with you a screen so that you can have a background for our presentation. <laughs> So, 
Well, Minerva Foods é a principal. Minerva Foods é o maior beef exporter in South America. We represent 20% of uh, exports in market share. We are present in Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Paraguay, and Uruguay, and more recently in Australia. We deliver, uh, we uh, work with more than 15,000 uh, suppliers, and our main objective is uh, to reach 2035 as the first uh, company with the net zero emission and we are going to work with a measurable results to arrive there we have three axes of performance the first is to reduce emissions up to 30 percent until 2030 eliminate illegal deforestation of all the chain in all the countries until 2030 and to this is very good to listen to to the words of Secretary Mauro, because the expansion of these monitoring systems and the use of public tools that are reliable to analyze the supply chain and engaging the farmer in uh, the processes and also engage uh, mineral foods uh, clients uh, in our Renovi program. As I said, uh, Uh, in Minera Foods, we have a, a measurable result, uh, always uh, promoted and with the main audit public process in Brazil, which is the audit of the beef commitment in Pará. So when we talk about sustainability, fighting illegal deforestation and climate change, we uh, bring results. And this audit is the only official audit for checking third parties in Brazil, where all pieces of information are provided by the government. And our results and of the other participants also are publicly disclosed. And you can see in the NPF site for the third year in a row, we have uh, highlighted with 100% of com uh, compliance uh, in terms of illegal deforestation, uh, land and grabbing indigenous and maroon lands uh, and uh, environmental regulation. And this is a true commitment in a, a fight for illegal deforestation. It's a result of a commitment of our team and farmers. And this can extend to all the states in Brazil where we operate and also abroad because in Paraguay, Though we are analyzing 98% of our, our acquisitions, trying to reach 100% with all of these requisites being met. Uh, I will now talk about our program of low carbon emission on our chain, which is the main reason of our agenda here today. And the world is demanding changes. And the rule is that we have to change the private initiative, civil society, the government, and the program Renovi is that to do a follow up and go beyond to engage with the productive chain with practice of low carbon to manage and monitor the farms to facilitate access for the payment of ecosystem services and to recognize the progress of modern livestock that protects the environment and develop people and geographies all this in collaboration with a research institution farmers and using a robust methodology recognized internationally. We are very proud that this is the path that Minerva Foods is creating in the uh, sustainable production of beef. And our pilot is a result of this uh, co-joint effort for a more sustainable livestock. 25 farms in the different uh, countries and uh, farmers were selected according to their partnership and uh, they provide the data information so that we could calculate uh, the balance of the properties. Our uh, objective is to incentivate primary data together with practices that will allow increasing productivity with technology. Here I'm talking about genetics, uh, animal welfare, nutrition, grasslands. <clears throat> Yeah, with the soil, integrated system, the reduction of uh, the slaughter age, and also uh, increase the, the care for the environment, uh, uh, water resources, increase resilience for the farmers, access to new markets, profitability of the business models, and contribute for the local development. And last but not least, produce uh, food in a sustainable way so that it is uh, profitable so that uh, the farmers uh, can invest in new technologies. We are going to certificate uh, all this process with a certificate support by nature and uh, with uh, 
you know, the scientific checking in a very robust process. So these are the results that are very encouraging. All the 25 properties that, that we invited to become part of the process, they are below the average intensity of world emissions of per kilogram of beef produced. This is 44% below average. And this with no other additional practice, just measuring uh, the carbon uh, balance of these productive systems. And we can see here in these uh, three leaves here, Paraguay, Argentina, and Colombia, we have three cases of farms that then have a carbon balance on the negative side. So they are sequestering carbon and directly contributing with climate change and food production. So gentlemen and ladies, this is the evolution of livestock to produce low carbon food. And this is why Minerva Foods is doing a partnership with Ima Flora and we are very proud of all of this. And last but not least, on this page, on this last slide, we have a QR code I believe that you also received uh, this uh, QR code. And in our landing page, you'll find all the pieces of information from all the farms. I'm going to migrate to my landing page now so that you can have uh, an idea, a flavor, and you will all have an access uh, to this page. It's available in Chinese and English. And I'm even going to ask Isabel's help uh, uh, and the team of Imaflora that helped us so much in this production. So you could talk about carbon on track. Thank you, uh, Tassiano. Yes, uh, this page that you will be able to access uh, and you even see on the desk, you have this uh, bookmarker where you find the QR code that uh, direct you to this page. And those who want to see it in more details, this is a page already that explains what is Carbon on Track, which is an IMAFLORA program in the area of climate and emissions, which is a program to bring no new value to the low carbon livestock in Brazil. And this happens through the studies, uh, through the calculations of the balance that IMAFLORA does for a certain time. But now livestock, and in this first uh, partner, which is Minerva, it's very interesting because now we can bring some figures in this pilot that uh, Tassiano introduced. And all of this is under development, but in shortly, you will be able to navigate on a platform and see all the uh, sectorial data in the case of livestock, what is the behavior, and it's well, a long-term idea. A deal for a long term to check this path of what is the livestock without uh, carbon and also companies like Minerva that will have their own panels that they can use for themselves uh, to do a follow-up of the monitoring of the farms that where they are calculating and also access to other stakeholders with uh, which uh, they uh, uh, relate, uh, stakeholders, uh, shareholders, investors, and public assets will be possible too. So this is carbon on track, which is livestock, but also grains, carbon on track, restoration to connect this to what was said. It will come. So we are very encouraged with this because in addition to do a study and find the results, this has to be promoted, disclosed, so that other companies and other uh, growers can also demonstrate uh, this path that they are already following of a low emission livestock. So here, for instance, on this landing page, we have the Minerva case and you can open navigate and see the information of some farms and uh, ahead. Uh, we will have this on an actual platform that will be uh, showing it with a lot of details. So this is it. We are very encouraged. And the connection that we have with this initiative, like the public initiative in a partnership with the university and the private initiative in this area of cal calculation and demonstration of a low carbon livestock is what we need now to zero and really show. And another important point that Marina and I were talking about this week is that now with this announcement of this uh, commitment, 
in terms of methane, this me makes it even more important because we will have to shed light uh, very shortly all this uh, information of what a low emission livestock is uh, compared to what we show in terms of uh, carbon equivalent, but also showing methane because uh, enteric fermentation has a strong weight on this uh, calculation of uh, carbon in livestock. So is this, uh, Tassiano, thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for showing us the landing page and we hope you come and visit us and also in the platform very shortly. So now I believe I will open to our Q&A session. Secretary, can you still remain here? You tell me if anything. So I feel comfortable. So I open first uh, to the audience here. If anybody has here any questions? No? Not yet. Thank you very much for your presentations, which were excellent. I have a question concerning the Green Seal, and congratulations for your initiative. It's very nice to see that. I see that some producers sort of worry about the initiative and the project. Maybe it's not all that well accepted by all, even though it's such a nice project. So my question is whether some producers, well, is it unfair from a competitive point of view, the fact that uh, you don't have the same platform for all states? How can we justify to the producers if they consider that it is not fair because it's only being applied to one state right now? Well. To begin with, we're at a phase we call beta to consolidate the findings of the green seal. It is a platform from a legal point of view. It's not yet normalized. It is like an input for us to see the situation better. Yes, indeed, producers are worried and we work on the acceleration of the Rural Environmental Registry. And uh, we proposed a task force to work on this, preferably to register. For instance, we have one uh, municipality called Xinguara in Pará. They are uh, a big uh, cattle producer, and we would like to hurry up on registering them. We're also working for smaller producers, smaller farmers that uh, do the fattening of the cattle, that we should uh, work on the issue of intensity, taking technical assistance and so on. All of this needs time and we don't want to rush it, rush through all this. We already have uh, regular audits in the state of Pará concerning uh, the meat that is produced and they make proposals. And another thing we did is that in order not to do anything closed in, we created a committee to follow the uh, Green Seal with the participation of the productive sector, Embrapa, the academy, the uh, civil society. So we are trying to be uh, on a good basis with the productive sector in order to remove all tension and to have as much transparency as possible. I would like to add to that with an example. Right now, we're already working practically every week we hold meetings with the productive sector 
and uh, we have access to detailed information connected to the green seal and uh, in a proactive way we would like to identify the producers who can have the the seal in their chain and who want to be part of our chain also from a technical point of view so the moment you have more information you may also have positive action another important element is that right now the companies continue to have a very good uh, uh, role in geoprocessing they can analyze the direct ones but the indirect ones are, are more complex you have to integrate these data however all large slaughterhouses have the commitment to clean their chains of supply by 2025 so you have this commitment from slaughterhouses and since 2009 you have been working on providing them with means for this to be carried out on monday we're going to have another meeting and we may have uh, some important news perhaps on the green seal well this meeting on monday is going to be held together with a consortium of states several states are participating participating in terms of technical cooperation it's like car it started in parai 2008 mato grosso followed suit and now it's all over the country the, the same thing is going to happen to the green seal my name is marina piato from ima flora I congratulate Para for the Green Seal. And it's important to mention it's one of the states with the highest rates of deforestation. So we really do need these tools to uh, curb uh, deforestation in Para and in the Amazon. My question is what are producers doing in terms of having low emission cattle raising because the generation of methane concerns brazil a lot should we reduce the consumption of meat or reduce the herd or what well we would like to mention that according to emma for emma flora and the uh, partnership with minerva these practices lead to a reduction in emissions and there is no need to do anything about the herd or Brazilian livestock. On the contrary, the idea is to bring efficiency to this sector. Uh, I wanted uh, some comments on the field really to connect fields uh, to the COP itself. I will have uh, to leave you. I thank uh, you for the question and I thank the organizers for having invited me. I would like to tell you that if anyone is interested, we can reconcile uh, different points in the chain in order to be as transparent and as efficient as possible in uh, this sector. Thank you. Thank you, Marina, for your question. I will start by thanking. Do you hear me? I will start by thanking, thanking Secretary Mauro. He has left our panel. Well, Marina, the main point you have already mentioned, it's technology. We believe here at Minerva, together with the production chain, that there are means to reduce age at slaughter and increase average weight. We are talking about a whole set of practices involving animal handling, genetics, the pasture, rotation on the pasture, integration, intensified uh, systems such as uh, tropical feedlots. In the tropics, the fattening period goes from 60 to 120 days. And uh, 
open uh, feedlots are very interesting. In my opinion, they are the best because then the animal receives 100% of the time on pasture and they receive a, like a complement in the trough of, uh, of uh, feed. So these technologies, uh, genetic management, pasture, nutrition, all of this contributes to the reduction of methane emissions, especially uh, the reduction of age at slaughter. If we were, we worked out, and these uh, data are public in the Minerva site, but in 2020, the average age at slaughter uh, for Minerva was less than 30 months. So if we compare that to the age at slaughter in the country, in Brazil, we have already reduced 30% emissions of methane gas. So it is a set of different technologies and the access to market, the opening up of new markets and clients, the business model for farmers for producers is essential to allow them to increase their profitability and therefore the sustainability of uh, the territory they, they have without uh, asking for new areas to be open and protecting the ecosystem, the biodiversity, the water resources, and uh, finally having access to mark, uh, carbon markets. I think this is a whole set of steps, Brazil and South America, the other countries where we operate, they are well positioned to participate in all this, more so than many other countries. Thank you. With all these efforts, we have a, a promising future ahead of us. Since this is an online transmission, I'm going to ask one of the questions coming from our audience. Well, it's to do with the green seal, Haoni, maybe you can answer it. It's a question regarding producers who have problems. They've done something illegal, perhaps deforestation. Is there a component allowing you to monitor these farmers that have problems? And is there a way you can follow them once the areas have been regularized? Excellent question. Well, the Green Seal is a platform for transparency. It tries to establish a symmetry in, of information in all the uh, links in the chain. For instance, uh, a deforestation license uh, under the forest code, it might be a criterion for exclusion, but suppose he moves forward in the process of uh, environmental regularization. This information is going to appear on his green seal. Let us suppose he has another problem. The state of Pará has made much progress in validation, but still we have uh, nearly 100,000 properties that are not regularized, which is a huge problem. And uh, we have a program together with the Association of Cattle Breeders in Pará, uh, consisting in fencing an area and informing the public authorities that they are in the process of regularization. So once the producer inserts all that in the system, the green seal appears. Also his status from red goes to gray. This idea is for them to see themselves. They will diagnose themselves as red and they will see they will promote it to gray if they do something in the farm, according to the environmental legislation of the state. So this is how we go about it. Thank you very much for making it clear 
fornecedores, mas eles precisam ser bons, né? Então, se você tem... The idea is not that you won't have suppliers, it's just that the suppliers must be good. And if you can uh, compare them, monitor them transparently, we, uh, we will end up adjusting the whole chain. Would anyone else wish to ask a question? If not, I will ask one more question here because the online uh, public is quite interesting. This question goes to Cassiano, Tassiano, in my point of view, very interesting. Our viewer wants to know what Minerva Foods thinks about escalating this work and this initiative to encompass more Minerva suppliers and what do you say about the, the reception of uh, suppliers? How do they receive this idea? It's two questions really. Thank you, Isabel. I will start with the second question. Well, the opening has been excellent. All the producers we contacted to talk about the objectives of Renovi and to explain Minerva's objectives to them. We are sorting out the technology to be able to hear you. Am I online? Thank you. I will start from the, your second question. The opening was fantastic. All the producers we contacted and we invited to participate in the Renovi initiative of the program, they have all accepted. I am persuaded that this is this initiative, the carbon note track, is a great incentive to producers. There is much space for livestock to uh, adopt uh, this no carbon idea in order to have access to more markets. Well, the scaling of this is, uh, is one of the challenges. We also take into account technologies. We have a partnership with Santos Lab and Biophilica to use top technology to draw the uh, carbon balance in these properties, in these farms. When we talk about the 15,000 farmers, Minerva is very much focused on the export market with more added value. And there is a, a great concentration of uh, producers there that manage to attain a level of quality, sanitary uh, quality, minimum weight of the animal, maximum age, pH of the meat. This is the technology package I was talking about. In fact, we need to encourage farmers to be uh, profitable enough to be able to afford all these technologies that allows them to have access to markets that will pay more for their for their products uh, this is all a big challenge and we are very confident as to the production chain that supplies us. We are sure we can offer the world uh, sustainable quality products and uh, we can also access the payment service for ecosystemic products. This will be enjoyed by South American producers because they have a high quality, high competitiveness. And we are precisely in this uh, spirit to produce quality products and uh, access the carbon market as well. Thank you very much. We have a question from the audience.
Hi. Yes, thank you. Um, as you know, on, on Monday was a great announcement about the, the compromise of the Global Methane Pledge, that the, this, the objective is to achieve 30% of, of reduce of methane emissions in, in, in the world. I mean, in, in the countries that signed the agreement. Well, Brazil and most of the countries where Minerva works are part are, are signing signed already the agreement too. So my, my question is, first of all, what do you think about Minerva, about how they can achieve this goal for 2030 to reduce 30% of emissions of methane? And the second one is, what they think that will be the impact over the markets, this, this global agreement uh, for, for the markets and the, and the introduction of beef products in those markets, in different markets. Thank you. Tassiano. Okay, uh, should I answer that in English? Estamos sem som, minutinho. Voltamos. Am I on? Uh, am, I, am I already on? I don't know. I don't know if I should answer that in English. Probably it is. Uh, it is better, uh, right? Technical eu, issue. Eu acho que, are, que are we? Estava saindo um som aqui da tradução. Eu eu falo em português. Should I speak Portuguese or English? She says. Portuguese. Me, me orientaram aqui pela tela, Isabel. I was told to speak Portuguese. Good. Thank you for the question. I think I answered part of the question just now in in my last comments. First of all, we believe the commitment is very positive because, in fact this commitment to reduce methane gas, looking not just at the existing emissions from livestock. Of course, they have a more relevant percentage, but there are opportunities to invest in technologies to reduce methane gas. Treating residues, for instance, in, in the industry, if the industries treat the effluents the main gas from anaerobic uh, ponds, which are used uh, in tropical countries, well, they are areas of um, emission of methane gas. So there are opportunities for Brazil and the other countries to reduce methane reduction, not just in the livestock production, but also in the treatment of industrial effluents. And looking at the livestock chain, we believe uh, this is an incentive to the adoption of uh, technification practices, intensification of uh, practices that will reduce emissions. And the big leap here is in the reduction of age at slaughter. And this comes together with uh, uh, nutrition management, uh, of the handling, the care for the soil, nutrition, etc., And this will uh, contribute to a better carcass weight and a reduction in uh, slaughter age. If we consider just Minerva, which is focused on the export market, in our case, the, the, the average slaughter age is less than 30 months already. So with this average age at slaughter, uh, under 30 months in comparison with the rest of Brazil, we have already reduced 30% of uh, uh, methane emissions in the production chain. So I think uh, it is a great in incentive to look at the technification of the Brazilian livestock production chain as a whole. There must always be a business model for rural producers, the farmers, allowing them to reduce emissions. The ones I mentioned, for instance, they will increase uh, 
productivity and profitability, and at the same time will increase sustainability. And the, the occupation of uh, the soil will be more sustainable, protecting water sources, forests, etc. And this will allow them to stay where they are forever because the territory will be occupied in more sustainable manner, more efficient manner, producing food and contributing to uh, climate change, reducing uh, carbon. Uh, thank you, Tassiano. I just want to complement this. Uh, in our university, uh, we had a research group uh, with our professor here, um, and part of what we were able to do uh, is very important. Uh, meat and zero carbon, this does not exist, but on a, on a short run, we can have uh, different models and uh, reforestation, restoration of the forest, uh, this can remove. But after some years, you are not removing anymore, but we have still cattle emitting methane. So uh, to have a good uh, managed pasture, this is okay, but zero emission won't be possible. And the second uh, thing, the most important uh, measure, and here I agree to uh, Minerva, is uh, to reduce. So we have a, a high emphasis on pasture reforms, but uh, what we can uh, gain with confinement and is bigger than uh, only the reformation of pastures. But the positive point is China um, wants uh, younger animals and 30 months for uh, health reasons. So uh, the only way is to have lower emissions. And, this, uh, and here we have already a means to do this. For example, uh, in uh, the US, they uh, have a slaughter age of 24 months. So here we can uh, increase productivity and reduce emissions. And this is possible, yes. Yes, and uh, this agent, this uh, market is very important and we need to uh, understand what the market needs and uh, put everything into account. So we are already getting to an end. I don't know if we have further questions from the audience. No. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tassiano, Juliana, uh, both online. And thank you also, Professor Haoni, and also uh, the Secretary of Environment who left us. So the topic of this uh, event is very important because we qu know quite well the problem, but we still need to find solutions uh, with monitoring, with control of um, the suppliers. And also we need to improve this uh, so important uh, economic activities, uh, important for the Amazon, but also for other countries and biomes. So thank you very much for the ICS, uh, for the uh, Climate Action Hub and all the other partners um, that help us to find these people. And uh, finally this year we could meet uh, on, we could meet live. Well, but um, my name is Isabel Garcia Vigo. Uh, I'm a manager, project manager at Climafora. I really would uh, like you to um, uh, access this landing page and uh, look at uh, the informations here. Here we have informations also of um, Minerva 
And uh, of course, I would like to announce this platform, Carbon Grab, where we will have much more data. So thank you very much. And, uh, and I want to wish you a nice event today.